My mother was born in Tacoma, Washington and uh, Fort Lewis. Lived and grew up in San Antonio and had really on the west side of San Antonio, attending Jefferson High School and, and really kept the west side in her heart the whole, the whole time she's uh, been here and to this day. We were all scouts at one point. Uh, my sister and I were Girl Scouts and um, one of the best things that was kind of became a family motto because we would go camping all together um, all the time was that always leave the campsite better than you found it and that didn't just go for the campsite that kind of went for everything that we touched. I've known Letitia for a very long time. We were in Girl Scouts together and she was just she was just a light spirit, a bubble, a, a full of joy and confidence. There was a diversity. It crossed color lines, it crossed racial lines, ethnic lines, except all you had to be was a girl to get into our troop. Letitia always was a caring person. Uh, she was showed very much uh, her caring side to her friends and she welcomed me not just as her friend but in her family and uh, being so friendly and caring led us to look to Letitia for leadership and advice. So oftentimes you know being in a big family it was uh, we, we did our spring breaks on camping trips and, and in the outdoors and those are some of my favorite memories of spring break. I think what was special about those camping trips is each of us today look back and have a different thing we love about them. And that's because my mother and father really flourished what was unique about us and allowed that to come in through group activities like camping. There's one story that's really good in particular. I mean, we did this several times, but where she would literally make mountains of like spaghetti and salad and we would go under the bridge and we would feed the homeless, just her and us. But this was like, a Sunday activity for our family, not in front of Camry, not constituents, not anything, it's just, just like that type of stuff. So when my mother decided that she was interested in running for uh, politics, and we had a family meeting is what we call it. Anytime we had discussed anything, we'd have family meetings. And I, I, think, I think it was Henry. Yep. Um, who said, you know, why does mommy need to be a state representative? And the reason this was so impactful for mom is that at the time she was thinking, look, I need to be there because I'm a pharmacist. I need to be there because I grew up in the west side of San Antonio. I need to be there because I'm an educated um, Latina. And I just, there's so many things I can address regarding education and healthcare and infrastructure. But she said until that moment, it didn't impact her that the reason she needed to be there was because she was a mother. One of the most impactful moments was that first um, really experience that we had on the House floor when she was elected to the Texas legislature. I mean, she comes in with six children. I mean, one on one right hip, another one on the left hip. We are following her like little ducklings. And we are there and proud and on the House floor. One of my all-time favorite senators. She was, in fact, my very best friend and very favorite comadre in the Texas Senate. She was respected for her knowledge and hard work, admired for her intelligence and leadership, and loved for her kindness and charm. This accomplished former senator continues to be equally effective as she collaborates with us to further her causes in multiple arenas. Hundreds of loud protesters packed the state capitol. One lawmaker staged a filibuster that lasted close to 11 hours. Then all of a sudden, I am getting calls from friends of mine all over the country, women's health advocates all over. I think all of us were getting these calls saying, so your mom is incredible. Do you have any idea what's going on right now at the, on, on the Texas Senate floor? And that was when Senator Van De Pute, who had not been there during the course of the day, after having been at her father's funeral, that was when she made the comment heard around the world and the whole dynamic of the chamber changed. You know, I turn on the television and we start to see this and, and we weren't surprised. At what point must a female senator raise her hand or her voice to be recognized over the male colleagues in the room? And to watch the entire Senate gallery just stand up and applaud and ignite, I was so proud, but I wasn't surprised. 
to be quite honest, I mean, this is my mom. We're used to her being that catalyst, that powerhouse. So when my mom joined the Senate in 1999, uh, there were only three female senators um, currently serving, and so she became the fourth. And interesting enough that all four were former Girl Scouts. And just because she has uh, left public life as an elected official, she has that same fight. And so now with another event of what she's doing, she's advocating on the part of really socially conscientious businesses and groups to create infrastructure, to create opportunities for those who don't have any. Uh, I've been honored to work alongside her. You know, when we came together, we made national news. Here was a, a Democrat and a Republican coming together uh, and it was, it was news, but I will tell you, uh, we work so well together. We agree m much more than we've ever than we would disagree. Uh, in fact, sometimes I have to remind them who the conservative is and and who the Democrat is. But we have such a great time, and and it's because we respect each other. A little over a year ago, my mother um, was hit by an SUV, so she was a, in a pedestrian uh, vehicle accident. On her mind, she said she had to live and she had to get through it for the sake of the driver that hit her. That impact caused her to go airborne. Though she didn't know it at the time, she suffered significant head trauma, multiple broken and shattered bones, among other serious injuries. Right before impact, I was looking at him. He looked up and the look of terror that he had in his face and he knew he was gonna hit me. I don't know if there's a better definition of selflessness than being in that kind of pain, going through an experience like that and immediately thinking about, about that driver. And that's what she was thinking about in the moment of being hit by somebody is I have to make it through so I don't ruin this guy's life. She's a power woman and she, I know for my sisters, but also my brothers taught us all to be leaders I grew up watching Leticia hold powerful roles in our government uh, and watching her take the lead on so many issues and that definitely inspired me to be where I am today. As a young Latina growing up in San Antonio, I didn't have a lot of Latina elected officials to look up to, but I did have Senator Leticia Mandepute. Because she ran, she took that chance and she won, she showed me my future and for that I'm forever grateful. You, as a true Girl Scout, are always prepared to inspire and to help the next generation of Latinas in public service. Congratulations. You're a genuine public servant. Congratulations on this well-deserved recognition. Thank you for all you do for your community and your family. It's a pleasure to be a part of this. Thank you for creating spaces for women like me uh, to become involved and to help to try to make a difference in our world. You inspire all of us every day. Thank you. Senator Vandepute is an amazing person and I'm blessed and fortunate to have been mentored by her and to call her a friend and the mother figure in my life. Thank you, boss. Thank you so much for everything you've done for our community and our state. Letitia, I'm gonna take this moment before I close this out to congratulate you on the 2023 True Foil Award. So God bless you, Letitia, and congratulations, you deserve this. Congratulations, Letitia. It is puro corazón. Congratulations. Congratulations, Mom. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you.